Curly Bitches, it's Kitty Cat DeMille. I am here with Miss Vixen DeVille. Not to be confused with DeMille. <laughs> We're like half related. Yes, exactly. Um, how'd you get started? Um, I was working back in London in 2000 and I want to say six, maybe five, mm -hmm. that kind of time. Um, and it was more that I was uh, I was an actor who liked dress, getting dressed up in, in corsets and stockings and that kind of stuff. I love dressing up in it. Um, and the, the idea of taking it off kind of brought me the fear of death. Um, so uh, <laughs> I was more into the whole like presenting the character and talking to the audience and bantering the audience. And I joined this troupe um, w with this act that I had where I was making them do sound effects. And I really wanted to have an act where I was on stage and be in control of the audience. Rather mm -hmm. than when you're an actor and you're doing a monologue, it's like you're just doing it. And whether they pay attention or not, it's, you know, <laughs> it's up to them. Whereas breaking the fourth wall and like be able to actually interact with Having them, that conversation. Absolutely. Yeah. I wanted to be able to perform something where I could actually interact with my audience that I'm dealing with. Yeah. And so I uh, presented this act to this group that just started up. And uh, they were like, it's awesome because we had dancers and singers and singers and dancers coming out of our ears and we had nothing that was kind of different to break it all out. Mm -hmm. So that was my first act was coming on stage and bantering with the audience, interacting with the audience. Mm -hmm. And uh, and the more I got involved with the troupe, the more I joined their dances and then started doing the, the stripping side of right. it and started really taking off into and finding out this burlesque world and finding out how it affected me and affected me as a performer and as a person and, and the rest is... is Burlesque history. Burlesque history. It's, it's stockings <laughs> on the floor, so to speak. Ixon does a lot of specialty acts. If you want to run through your gamut of what we do, you do. Um, so I started off doing the, the, the interactive story stuff, and then I moved on to doing uh, magic with swords and boxes and stabbing people and then bringing them back to life. And yeah. then uh, I moved into fire eating, uh, glass walking, aerial hoop. Um, I think that's it. The, the, a few more magic acts and a couple of different... Uh, um, the, the, the sideshow freak showy side stuff, but uh, I'm always trying to pick up new new skills and figure out new things to spice up my act. We're all just so. trying to join the circus one way or another <laughs> in the burlesque world. In you just got to bring a bit of magic to the theater, you know, to exactly, the stage. Exactly, so. exactly. You just throw some <laughs> glitter on top of it, and everything's perfect. Now, you uh -huh. also teach burlesque. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. So tell us a little bit about your classes. So um, I started teaching uh, for another company, and they wanted to bring me in to, to do this intro class, and they really wanted to teach um, just basic dance moves and I was like well I can teach basic dance moves but that's not my my remit my remit is really mm -hmm. focusing on the characters of burlesque mm -hmm. on you having your own personal confidence on stage doing whatever it is that you're doing being whatever persona you being are being whatever persona you are having the celebration of your own freedom um, and so my intro to burlesque is is actually working with each person and saying what is it that you hide from the day-to-day -day world? So what is it that you, you're quashing because of your job or your status or you, because you're, you're a parent or because you have responsibilities of some kind or you've always been told that you're goofy or intelligent or sporty or not sporty, whatever right. you've been told in your life, um, what's living underneath? Because when you're a kid, you're like, I want to try horse riding. I want to try this. Hey, I want to dress up like that, man. I want to dress up like the whatever. And you have, you, you play around with who you are. Right. And once you hit like you know early teens, late teens, you're sort of you sort of you've done trying things out, and you sort of go, oh well, this is me now. And so I like the idea of playing with people and going, what else is living and what what has stunted since you decided that I've now got this job and this right. marriage and these kids and this house or whatever it is or this lifestyle. Find out what else lives there. Like let's try being the absolute opposite or let's try you know. Um, so it, it's, it's it's finding this character that, that lives within you and bringing that out 110% and having that celebration of that character on stage. And second of all, having absolute confidence in just you being in front of an audience. Right. And before you add on the dance moves and the, te and the techniques and mm. the fire eating and the whatever else, the tap dancing that you want to do, you just need to be able to stand in front of an audience and just be, hey, here I am, let's celebrate me. And then you can put on whatever else on top of that. Yeah. So that's where I always start with my burlesque classes, is delving into people's um, things that are, that are holding them back, things they feel insecure about, and celebrating them and, and setting them free. I mean, I remember when I first started, I was fine with the dancing. I was like, ah, I'm fine with the dancing, I'm fine with being in front of an audience, but I got really nervous about taking the clothes off. Right. And it wasn't even 
my body underneath. Mm -hmm. It was having the confidence to take them off Absolutely, yeah. and being okay with doing that mm -hmm. in front of people. Yeah. Like, you a lot of confidence. And it comes from two places. I always say that it's not necessarily that you are shy about yourself. Yeah. You might also be really proud about yourself. Like, you might think, I've got amazing abs or I've got a really nice ass, whatever it is. But you taking pride in it, you, 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 there's a shyness in that as well because you don't want to be seen to be like, hey, look at me, I'm so amazing. Because people think you're arrogant and, right. and, and think, oh God, look at her, who does she think she is? Right. So there's, it's not even a, oh, I don't like myself. That's the whole, I don't want to, I don't want to seem to be full of pride and, and, you know, so it's dealing with both those issues. It's yeah. not always a, oh, I hate my body kind of thing. It's a, I don't want to be seen to be, I don't want people to sneer at me for being up my own ass. Like, <laughs> look, I'm so amazing. Look at, at me. Well, yeah. <laughs> How have you seen your students change through the course? Oh, it's been amazing. And the, the thing is, I've had so many people say to me that it's been like better than therapy. Some of my students are actually seeing therapists and they're like, or have, have seen therapists mm -hmm. for various other reasons. And they're like, I, in two classes of yours, I've dealt with these issues and I went through four years of therapy and you just hit them in, in, in like, you know, two sessions, yeah. this is amazing. And I've seen people really like come into their own and regain themselves and get this new confidence and just really find themselves yeah. and sit themselves. Some of them are just like, even after just a couple of classes, I may not perform, but I can walk down the street feeling like, yeah, people can look at me. Like if, you know, if you get a bit harassed by like, um, you know, workmen wolf whistling at you or something, or you don't really want to go up to people and ask questions like where, you know, where's something in the grocery store? Or, like, I mean, a bunch of homeless people on the Hollywood Boulevard, you know, like when they come up to you, I'm chatting to them because yeah. they, it's, you know, and some people are like, oh God, don't speak to me. So just having that to affect your day-to-day -day life, not yeah. just necessarily, I want to be a burlesque performer, I want to perform on the stage, but just if you feel like, I just feel so like I need to, to be more comfortable with myself in my in my day to day life. Even speaking in front of people at your at your workplace, you yeah. know, or and telling your roommate that you want them to move out. <laughs> whatever it is you need more confidence to do. Or like some people are terrified about getting married. They're like, I don't want all these people looking at me. In the world of burlesque, you uh, you can be less than 100 pounds, and you can be 250 pounds, and the difference between whether or not you watch the person is the confidence. Absolutely. And if someone has confidence in themselves, then you, you just enjoy their enjoyment of yeah. themselves, you know? And if someone has like what they would consider to be a flaw, or if, and they call that out, like if I know I've got like, I don't know, a scar on me or some cellulite on my ass, whatever, if I like point and go, look, look at my cellulite ass, like everyone goes, oh yeah, cool, like you're comfortable with it, like let's you're just. You're a human being. There's no yeah. like uncomfortableness, there's no, we rejoice in your confidence, and it's a whole shared experience that we all, um, take part in and it's just a celebration of confidence and people being themselves and us all being individual humans and celebrating the fact that we're all different and we're all amazing. Thank you for watching. Uh, make sure to hit the subscribe button below, like us, share all of the fun things. Once again, I'm Kitty Katzenil and this is Vixen DeVille for Working the Tease and we'll see you next time. Bye!